<laughs> Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Chuck Suki and Jesse Beaver. to be here honestly to sit up on a stage with you Chuck um, I've been admiring your work and we listened to your stuff in the feed pickup when I was growing up and, Please. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I'm grown up um, but honestly don't think I would still be doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for the stories so to have an event like this that's really focused on the stories behind the songs but also the stories that are the songs I think is really special to me and it gets me really excited to to be up here to talk about it because I grew up listening to folk music that was coming out of my dad's um, record player, out of his guitar, of course, the basement, and I just fell in love with songwriters that could put me in a moment, even when I was like six or seven years old. I fell in love with Wild Lovett's Waltz and Fool, like play that over and over for me because that man was such a mystery, but also I felt like compassion for him. I wanted to know him, so I wanted to become a songwriter so that I could put people in that moment, those three or four minutes where you could really sit down and, and feel like you could relate to someone or see someone or, or know the feeling, know the space that they were in. I don't know how to write a song, if that's what we're supposed <laughs> to answer today, except for, I think, and Chuck, maybe you would agree, it's to sit down and take the time to listen and then give yourself some space, and sometimes it just comes to you. I've noticed that space, we say space now in the, in the time of COVID, but the time that we give ourselves, and especially me as a working mom and a working person, is harder and harder to come by. It's a little bit more precious, and so um, I have to guard it a little bit more closely in my day and age. But I'm excited to share some of my favorite songs with you this afternoon. Um, the first one I'm going to sing for you is a kickoff to the album that I wrote when I first moved back to the ranch, and it's been almost 10 years now that I've been home as a rancher and uh, and then everything in between, like we do when you are a rancher, you have like 16 other jobs. I'm a walking example of that. <laughs> some days I'm walking, some days I'm running. <laughs> most days I'm driving, most days I'm late. Uh, the other day I was stuck in a snowbank, uh, so. And really stuck in a snowbank, Chuck, like I had to bring my girls to uh, get to school on time because I have a kindergartner and so I went down to get my little sister. I popped right into a snowbank. Not only was I so stuck stuck enough that my husband couldn't pull me out, my brother-in-law had to pull him to pull me out and then my dad had to come with a tractor just to laugh at me. <laughs> um, but this song speaks to that feeling when I came back to the ranch and uh, of course the landscape was changing in Western North Dakota very rapidly 10 years ago. It was like I left in 2001, I came back, I blinked and like everyone from all over the world was in my community that was dying when I, when I left. And it was something that was so astronomically hard to wrap your mind around because the reason that we could be there was because the economy was booming. But then also what did I think about an oil well coming up over the landscape? It was really not a black and white situation, I'll talk more about this, but I remember writing this song, walking out to my favorite pasture, um, the east pasture, and my dog was with me, I swore I saw a mountain lion, I thought I was going to die that day. <laughs> Didn't have mountain lions when I was growing up out there. Um, and I thought, well, I'm here, I'm here for good, and that's that big barn that used to be so big when I was little certainly shrunk. That little, that big house that used to be so big when I was little certainly shrunk when I brought all my stuff in there and, and all of my, my boot collection and all my instruments and all the hand-me-down furniture. And sometimes I think we want to keep a place so precious we don't let it bloom the way it needs to bloom. But that's kind of where that inspiration, the inspiration came from for this song. This is called Nothing's, Nothing's Forever. Sometimes I don't know the difference between summer and winter in the season of spring. Sometimes I don't know how happy to be because nothing's forever, baby. Summer brings thistle and winter brings snow. All of the seasons, it's the last one to go. It stays till the sun has a reason to show. Singing, nothing's forever, 
having had the opportunity, although I thought for most of my early life that the farm was a prison and uh, that it, there was all this life out beyond and I was ignoring the life at hand. And, and, uh, but that even being said, the life at hand was still speaking of its own because it has its own value and its own voice. And somehow that would was able to be absorbed and somehow between heart and soul and mind um, some songs emerged and but it was that that sort of monastic experience for me I believe that uh, that fostered much of the 
what you're going to hear today. Um, and yeah, there was times where it was calculated where I was trying to be like a Nashville songwriter or be somebody else. And then over time, realized that I was already there, that I already was being. And so at this stage of life especially, it's not a matter of, of a calculation. It's a matter of gratitude to be. So um, see, see, the tongue is getting really <laughs> floppy here. So, <laughs> But uh, and, and just being alone out on the swather or the tractor or out fixing fence and then realizing that somehow there's this osmosis or rising of spirit from the... From the Maybe the soil, maybe from past souls that walk that land as well. I, I don't know. To the morning light tender Shadows shallowly fall Night will surrender Like the hay standing tall To the real and the sickle As they gather the take Into legion of windrows churn and stern wheeler wake in June fields June fields hang your heart on the moon field June fields of home with an eye on And on the wheel, we're workers together, both muscle and steel, push and there's hurry, try to hasten the game, though it's worthy of worry. Still is welcome the rain to June fields, June fields. Hang your heart on the moon field, June fields of home. Quick the cold thunder calls with relief for us all. As we wait out the squall in June fields. in the deep of December. While the moon glazes snow Asleep by the ember Deep in dream paths I go Lark and the plover Voice concern for their young In sweet grass and clover Sweet forgiveness is sung in June fields, June fields. Hang your heart on the moon field, June fields of home. Thank you. one of those songs that you I hear and I'm like dang I wish I would have written that one um, 
And so much of what you write, Chuck, resonates with me. Um, I was, you know, you in, grow, grew up in a time where we had two radio stations at the ranch. <laughs> we had the one that played Reba McIntyre, and then the other one that played some sort of classic rock, and then, of course, whatever Dad was listening to in the tractor, the AM radio with the news and the sports. And, um, so I was always hungry for music uh, that I felt connected with. And, and then there were times where, where I was, you know, growing up learning to play um, the guitar so that I could write these songs uh, and wondering, like, should I try to, to write what I hear on the, the radio? But that's never, like, the way it went. What was always inspiring to me, and I say this when I'm talking to kids, we're lucky up here in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of everything, North Dakota. The weather and the landscape, it's so dramatic. It's so, like, today, yesterday when the wind was blowing across the, the interstate, it's so dramatic. It's a character in its own right and every single day it's different every single minute it's different and when you're a kid raised on a ranch and on the edge of the badlands the way even the light hits was inspiring to me and the uh and so it became kind of a, the weather became a backdrop to my songs as much as the landscape did and i doubt i've ever written really a song that didn't have the weather in it i don't think i write I don't think I write anything that doesn't have some sort of element of me being cold or <clears throat> hot or uncomfortable or, or something's, you know, pricking my legs and, you know, the itchy grass or whatever because it's so much of a connection to me. And, and once I realized, like, that's kind of where it was for me, that inspiration for me, I knew that I couldn't be anywhere else but home to really be truly inspired. And so when you were writing, you know, singing that song of home and these June fields and, and every, li every little moment that ticks by on a ranch is, is another season. It's branding season, it's harvest season, it's feeding cows season. Like we're into the next thing, into the next thing, and we all look a little bit different. I was talking about how, you know, you're a totally different person in your summer clothes than in your winter clothes around here. 74 layers later, oh, really? And the mittens that you have to put on these kids, that's a whole nother thing. Um, so it's like seven years later, can we just go outside? Where's your mitten? I don't know. Where's your other mitten? I don't know. Where's your thumb? I don't know. <laughs> just put it in your glove. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, that's the, that's the phase I'm at right now. <laughs> What are we doing in Bismarck? Looking for mittens. <laughs> what do I do when I pick my kids up? Go to the lost and found. <laughs> um, so I wanted to share uh, a, a song. I think everyone, and I'm sure you do too, has a song about rain in some sort of form. Um, because we're so, of course, connected to what the sky does in, in agriculture. And we didn't have as many drops as we wanted to this this summer and we had a dry summer and we were lucky we had some springs that we could put in and we were lucky that we could keep our cows. Um, but I have this memory of, of the rain being something in, on a hot August day that would interrupt the work that we would always do on a hot August day, like fencing, like at two o'clock in the afternoon with maybe not enough supplies and one fencing post and maybe missing gloves and not enough bug spray and everyone's hot and everyone's miserable and then the sky opens up the way it does, or it comes rumbling in over the hills and it just lets loose on you and you get to go inside. Like sometimes <laughs> that's the only way you get a break. And when I was growing up, my dad working in town and also as a rancher, um, we didn't, we did a lot of tagging along and that was fun. We didn't do a lot of recreating in terms of like going to the lake. Everyone had a boat but us, you know. But um, we live right by. Lake Sakakawea, but we would sometimes, if it was going to rain, get to dig worms in the garden and go out to the shores of Lake Sakakawea and set our little lawn chairs on the edge and, um, and, and then watch my friends drive by on jet skis. But, <laughs> but I wouldn't have changed it, uh, the catfishing by the river, but all of that rain and all of that weather determined what kind of fun or, or what kind of work we were going to do. And so I always thought, found that kind of interesting. But when I wrote this song, it was actually at, during the time when my dad was deathly ill. And he had just, it was a, one of the times he tried to die. I tell him, quit trying, because you suck at it, really. Um, his heart had uh, aortic dissection, tried to kill him, and he was back home trying to recover. And I was writing music, because that's what I do to kind of get through those hard things. And I wrote this song about rain and based on a memory of riding uh, my horse, my mare, and my little sister riding her horse named Jerry. 
a little tiny pony that would sometimes just be sick of it and lay down, you know. And we would ride seven miles to the reservation to trail cattle there or trail them back or just check on them, and they were there in the fall. And um, one time, and who knows, our memories sometimes are more dramatic than, most. mostly my memories are more dramatic in a story than they are in real life, so this one maybe grew. But the, a storm was coming that we didn't know was coming, and we were way out on the reservation. And um, Dad said, okay, the sky's getting dark. We're going to get home late. It's going to be dark. So you all just separate, okay? So we don't get, hopefully, don't get struck by lightning. And, and the thing that they always tell you when you're riding horses out there is if you get separated, you go on the top of a hill and holler, or maybe that's just what I learned to do. And then if you can't find anyone, you just let your horse's head go and she'll go home, but I never really believed that because my horse would just stop and eat. And so I thought perhaps I was going to die out there and never make it back to the ranch for supper. But we let, our, we let our horses space out, and the rain came, and it poured on us, and we got to ride in a thunderstorm in the dark. Oh, my gosh. I was a cowboy. And we made it home safe, and my grandma had died a couple years prior to that, and we were down in the... Um, barnyard with a barnyard light on you know and he thought oh I'm alive and I swear I could smell her roast in the oven even though no one was in that little farmhouse so this is raining I am long-winded Chuck sorry <laughs> I'm Lutheran Sun beats down, turning my pale skin brown, and I have been cold for months, so I turn my face up. I hear the thunder crack. Heavy drops lick at my back And I think how nice it is That I could cool down like this So It's pouring 
Come on and sit down Come on into the house Come on in now Come on in Looks like it's lit enough Steam pours from your coffee cup Held by your Callous hands, oh, I like this change of plans. I pull your collar up. This weather is like our love. It's pouring the heat on us, then it's raining. There was this lovely couple, Daryl and I can't remember his, uh, Daryl Klein, and uh, was this always Cora? Millie. From Mandan? Millie Klein. No, they were both blind. Yeah, Millie. Was it Millie? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Millie. <laughs> but they, they were just uh, wonderful, this wonderful couple, and Daryl, after we got to know them, uh, he had been blinded, and I think, in his teens, and then he met his wife at the School for the Blind. But they were uh, just true blue Mandan residents, and you could often see Daryl walking alone in Mandan. And one time I asked him about that. I said, how do you get around? He says, well, every building has a different sound. I, I can hear the weather or the, the traffic reverberate off each building. I know exactly where I am. And he said, my trouble now isn't that I can't see, it's that I can't hear. <laughs> yeah, so so but here I am, you know, I'm putting my ear up to the microphone like that's good. What's with that? And, uh, uh, so I want to uh, just progress a little bit in, in, in the idea of songwriting and, and just the craft of it. And uh, I was asked to write some songs or partake in a songwriting exercise uh, with the council that was produced by the Council for the Arts, um, called Art for Life, and the idea was to to uh, go into care centers and work with or, or just be with residents who who probably didn't know they had songs within them, and to help exercise those those uh, those feelings in terms of music and song, and. Uh, but COVID hit, and so I ended up doing a, a whole bunch of telephone interviews. And I was talking with about, oh, I don't know, 20 people who frequented the, the uh, Burley County Senior Center. And they all talked about how they missed going and eating with their friends together, but they, uh, they uh, also were grateful that they could still get like, like Meals on Wheels. And so there was all, it always went back to food. And I was thinking when you talked about the smelling the, yeah. your grandma's cooking yeah. in, the, in the farmhouse. And that, that is such a, a, a common attaching factor, I think. And, and so I went to the, the Burley County Senior Center website and looked up what all this fantastic food was supposedly about and looking for the poetry there. And, and there it was. It's everywhere if we are open to it and have our ears and eyes on. And uh, so this is called The Menu. I'll find it. If you're hungry in your tummy and your heart is hungry too, the senior center can get you better they can bring it home to you they got meals to put on wheels like finger licking chicken fried chicken at the center senior center they feed your body and your soul they got a menu that will tend you with a side of rock and roll they can grill you, fulfill you with finger licking chicken fried chicken.
meatloaf gravy. Oh, so savory. Cod filet or pilaf rice. Chicken dumplings, really something. Vanilla pudding cooled on ice. They got noodles, beef tip noodles, and finger licking chicken fried chicken at the center. Senior center, they feed your body and your soul. They got a menu that will tend you with a side of rock and roll. They can grill you, they can fill you with finger licking chicken fried chicken. Baked lasagna. Whoa, come on, yeah. Cheesy hash brown casserole. Spaghetti meatballs. The garlic's your call. Dill potatoes. Cabbage roll. Taco salad. Tater scalloped. And finger licking chicken fried chicken at the center. Senior center. They feed your body and your soul. They got a menu that will tend you with a side of rock and roll. They can grill you, they fill you with finger licking chicken fried chicken at the center, senior center. Hey. You gotta say it. You just I know you wanna say it. Cause part of songwriting for me is how does I always go to how does this feel coming off my lips? How does it feel good? So just say, okay, finger licking chicken fried chicken. Finger licking chicken fried chicken. And that, folks, is how you make a song out of the senior center menu. <laughs> Dang. How do I follow that? Oh, that's oh you'll think thing. of something. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> that food thing, like, do I have to have a meal after everything? Absolutely you do. A well, lunch and a, yeah, snack. One of the, the other thing was, I just want to elaborate about just some of the idea there was like uh, with a side of rock and roll. And I had visited with uh, some uh, care center directors uh, about a year, year and a, two years ago, maybe. We were talking about um, what the, the changes in like going into what, what would they want for activities. And, and it, it just dawned on me that, you know, at some point, you are my sunshine is maybe going to fade off, you know, and they're going to want to have Inagata De Vida or... <laughs> Something blue suede shoes, at least you know. So sing us some of them old songs, you know. <laughs> One for the money, come on. <laughs> I think you're right on. So anyway, that's where the line um, with a side of rock and roll, because I just envisioned uh, uh, the uh, Meals on Wheels worker leaving, you know, getting out of his car and, and the radio's blaring some oldie station. <laughs> like that visual. <laughs> Making it right. rounds, I love it. Rock and roll chicken, yeah. <laughs> I like it, I like it. But that food thing, like I think there, I have a couple of songs that, uh, there's one that has like a dumpling floating in it. <laughs> like you have, that, when I talk to kids about writing that, the taste and the smells, those are the things that really evoke memory, so it doesn't surprise me that that's what they were talking to you about. And even in my childhood, like the smell of the basement of the Lutheran church, what these people were cooking down there, and how, you know, I'm going to call my mom out because I do the same thing, like, 
uh, she came from Grand Forks in, in a different world and came into the middle of, of nowhere, Western North Dakota. They still had party lines out there when she moved out there with this cowboy. And uh, they asked her to make something for you know church because you're on a schedule and she's not much of a baker. So she just made sure that she took it out of the cellophane before she brought it down to <laughs> And I just was asked to do the same thing at our little church. We still have the country churches out there. This woman, I went to, I was busy, of course, and I grabbed something at, in Minot, and I took it out and put it on the platter, and she's, oh, I just love this. I have to get your recipe. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't lie in church about this. I did not make it. And the, I said, I, oh, I got it at uh, Marketplace Foods, and she was like, the look <laughs> that changed on her face was like she was so disappointed I almost wished I could have lied to her or just at least not said something like just yeah I'm glad you like it um, anyway <laughs> but the characters uh, that I grew up with you know it took a while for me to get that when I started songwriting um, really just started with things that I didn't think the world would ever see and I think that's a really good place to start because there's no pressure there it's just a it's just a musing, it's just an oozing out of you, and I think that really helped me process a lot of things in my life as a teenager growing up, but, and a kid growing up in the middle of nowhere in a world that's changing, sometimes feel like it's changing really, really fast for our kids. But the idea that I could just put it down, put it down, a lot of early writing for me was introspective, so introspective. The hardest part for me, but the most fun now as a songwriter, is to create characters, is to see these characters in my life that, uh, like, you know, the woman at the Lutheran Church, June, you know, how her voice sounded above the quiet, you know, the rest of the, the congregation in that church, and how you knew that June was going to lead you to the end of glory, glow. No one can ever get that together at the church on Christmas. Like, we would just sit there giggling, but June would bring it home, right? <laughs> June would help us. Um, so trying to capture those characters in the essence of these humans is a hard thing to do as a songwriter. It's a hard thing to do as a novelist or a writer in the columns every week. I have to write a column every single week, almost 700 words every week for eight years. I couldn't, I can't believe I do that sometimes. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, please. <laughs> it's a lot harder some days than others, but the characters in, in, in my life in, in, in rural America for me have been the thing that has been the most fun to write. And so um, with that, I think I'm going to share a song that was inspired by my immigrant um, great-grandmother. And she um, came over, and we, a lot of us have similar stories about our, about our great-grandparents, but... Um, she was 100, almost 100 years old when I knew her in the nursing home. And um, she had a cane, and she had a picture of her 12 children. They had one picture of all of them together. And, but the youngest was photoshopped in on her lap because they never got a full family picture together. And when I say photoshopped, I mean cut out <laughs> and, and taped on her lap in that picture. Um, but she is a woman, like when I'm complaining of how life is on the ranch, how I just, you know, crashed my SUV into a snowbank that was playing like a movie for my kids, frozen on repeat, and it was hot in there with the heated seats, and, you know, and I'm complaining about the 30 mile drive to town, and I had, I come from a crop of people who came over here for a better life. She came over because she, um, they didn't. They couldn't afford her in Norway. They couldn't couldn't afford to keep her in the family. They sent her off across the fjord to work as a housekeeper, and she decided at 16 to come over across the ocean and onto Ellis Island, and then into Minnesota, where she met her husband. And they came out to the middle of nowhere at a time in our landscape that did there wasn't a tree in sight. Right, lots of wind, not a tree in sight. Her husband rode his bicycle 80 miles to Crosby to stake a claim. His bicycle. Like, I can't ride my bike up a hill on a gravel road <laughs> without thinking it's the, it's the end, uh, his near. But these hardy, hardy people. So I channeled her a lot, especially in early motherhood. And I'll, I'll probably play a couple more songs about motherhood. But this song is about this, these women out there that helped homestead these places. Um, when I moved into my grandma's house 10 years ago as an adult woman, I didn't have kids yet. Suddenly, I was transported to... A, like the understanding 
of the sacrifice that my grandma made to raise her kids in this place um, before the conveniences of diapers delivered to your door and chicken, nu chicken nuggets in a microwave. Like, um, they had chickens, and that's what, where they got their chicken nuggets. Like, I can't, uh, I can't even imagine it, but it's humbling, I guess is what I'm saying. And so I was channeling her and, and her strength and uh, in this song, after an argument with my husband about landscaping, which when you are married to a rancher and, a ha and, a, and he's now a professional carpenter, like there's a lot of arguments you get into about the things that you would like to have done around the place so your house could look a little more like Martha Stewart's and a little less like, well, the cow <laughs> in it. I mean, <laughs> that's all there is. Could you please just fix the fence so I ha don't have to scoop poop out of the playground area, perhaps? It's always a no, by the way. He always has something better to do. So we were arguing about whether or not he should scoop some scoria in the front driveway, and he said no, he had something better to do that day, which I agree, I'm sure. Um, so I said, just let me, teach me to drive the bobcat, and he saw that, how much I like to mow the lawn, because no one bothers me when I'm mowing the lawn on my riding lawnmower that I bought myself for Mother's Day three years ago. And then what, how many times he's come into the yard, and I've literally been stuck in the lawnmower. I've been stuck in the mud on the lawnmower, and they always show up before you can get it out. So he said no to the, to the bobcat, and he said no to the chainsaw. <laughs> I was gonna cut trails, you know, so I quit losing my beanies, because we have trees there now, a whole bunch of trees. And so many beanies and gloves have been sacrificed in those trees, so I was gonna cut a trail. And he said, no. I said, you'll be the only person to figure out how to cut her own damn head off, Jesse. He's known me since I was 12, he's not wrong, but still. So I went out and started shoveling, because I figured it was kind of raining, and if great grandma Gudrun you know, she could do it. She could raise 12 kids out here. I'm sure she never complained. <laughs> I could shovel some scoria. So I went out and shoveled scoria about 35 minutes, just long enough to write this song. Now work, girl, show me your muscles. Work, girl, pull back your hair. Work, girl, the day is long. Work ain't going nowhere. Picking rocks and raising babies, pennies heads up on the street, muddy boots and no complaining, gotta keep shoes on their feet. You might be born to be a sinner, might be born to be a saint, might be born to save each other, weren't born with money in the bank. So work, girl, show me your muscles. Work, girl, pull back your hair. Work, girl, the day is long. Work ain't going nowhere. When I fall, I get back up. Taught myself to drive this truck. Rains, it shines on all this dirt. Pull on your pants, girl, get to work. Can't be raised to wait for the day Someone show us what's right Car is broke, oh girl, you fix it Can't fix it, go get your bike Trees need trimming, get the chainsaw Gardens planted, horses fed Monday comes, you button up, girl Nine to five and five till bed and work, girl, show me your muscles. Work, girl, pull back your hair. Work, girl, the day is long. Work ain't going nowhere. When I fall, I get back up. Taught myself to drive this truck. Rains and shines on all this dirt. Pull on your pants, girl. Get to work. He can't lift it. You can push it. Thinks he knows well. So do you. Get some wire and make the lights work. Climb that ladder. Get the two. So work, girl. Show me your muscles. Work, girl, pull back your hair. Work, girl, the day is long. Work ain't going nowhere. Work, girl, don't wait for no man. Can't do it, you can't work. Girl, saw a nail and grind. Work, go build you a life. Now work, girl, the clock. 
clock is ticking. Go cut a bed. You hear them talking work, girl. Go kick some. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if June would approve or not, perhaps. <laughs> hmm. I've been um, readjusting some of my, my thoughts about and rediscovering some new things in old songs. And, <clears throat> and they always, uh, it amazes me, um, the stuff that's there that I didn't realize was there. And, um, and I was, um, and it just gets me thinking about things. And um, I remember my mom would take me to, uh, to Mass every Sunday into Mandan. And uh, after Mass, we would drive out on Highway 6, and we'd always stop at this little store that was by the, the golf course. I think it was called the Park Store. And uh, somehow, whether mom shorted the collection or what, I'm not sure, but there was a couple of quarters handed to me and then I'd go in and, and uh, buy a couple of either candy bars or, or an ice cream cone. And, and uh, usually it was candy bars. And, and then we'd carry on uh, uh, going up the hip, big hill on Highway 6, uh, just south of the Hart River. And we weren't even halfway up the hill, and I'd have those candy bars unwrapped. And I've had them torn open, unwrapped, I'd have the window rolled down, and the candy wrappers tossed out into the highway ditch without a thought or a reprimand from my mother or a thought from myself about what I was doing. That was just accepted. It was what we did with our candy wrappers and other <laughs> paraphernalia. <laughs> My neighbor, Al Gusson, is here. We often have talked about the transition in mowing the highway ditches along Highway 6, the transition from the plastic to the plastic area from the paper tin area era. And, you know, and there's nothing like getting a, uh, a well-aged, uh, well-filled diaper, plastic diaper stuck in the mower. And <laughs> oh, come on. Grow up. This, this is, that's the reality. But so I would toss those candy wrappers out without a, without a thought and just thinking that it was accepted, that that was the way it was. And you were speaking of accepting change earlier, and I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, so it was, it's, and now I'm having to accept other kinds of changes at this time of life. And, uh, and I'm, it's, it's not scary, but it's, it, it does take a certain amount of courage and to accept that you can't just throw your garbage in the ditch. And, uh, and for a long time, I thought that naively and maybe arrogantly thought that by writing and singing these songs about Dakota breezes and sunsets, that how could people not uh, appreciate the landscape more? And, and yet... Um, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so that's why I'm um, kind of at crossroads here in, in songwriting right now. But uh, it was also accepted to just pass by what I now call the shadows of the spirits of the vanquished who are often walking along Highway 6 as well in 1806, who would be walking to their community at, uh, at Standing Rock. And we would pass them by without a thought. It was just, no, maybe we didn't even see them. And, uh, but through the, that voice of truth that, uh, that we, if we are listening, is always speaking, um, we can learn. And I learned, I was given this gift. Uh, when I was about 15 years old. I was driving that truck to town. Well, one of my first trips where I was hauling uh, spring wheat into the elevator in Mandan, and Dad was out combining and was waiting for me to return. And on the return trip, on 1806, there was this figure walking along the, the highway. And 
Perhaps I had passed by him many, many, many times before, but for some reason on that day, the gift of recognition was given. And uh, I heard the voice that said, it's a hot August day, he could use a ride. And it was without fear. It was just, it just was. And I slowed down, kicked the door open, he climbed in, and I started working my way up through the gears. I wanted to impress him with my double clutching and <laughs> not grinding a single gear, but he was not to be impressed, and his silence made me even more nervous with his head held high and staring straight ahead. And finally, the silence was broken by his own voice. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm Rainbow, Kenny Rainbow. Yeah, I'm a singer, you know. And there again, naive, not necessarily malevolent naivety, but just not knowing, not realizing what he was trying to tell me, that he was somebody, that he wasn't a candy wrapper discarded along the North Dakota Highway. So it became a new, a new way of knowing. In my daddy's old truck, a Dodge G55, I was 15 years old, just coming alive. He stood on the shoulder, too proud to ask. I threw her in neutral, and slipped off the gas. I slowed to a roll on that gravelly grade. He climbed in the cab, no eye contact made. Six miles of silence, his head held up high. To my question unasked, I heard his reply. I'm Rainbow Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know. On the highway to heaven, the journey is slow. Till I come to my drum at the big powwow show I'm Rainbow Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know His voice held conviction from deep within inside Deeper than ego and far beyond pride Thirty years later it came to me clear He was a keeper of culture with stories to hear My head in its youth passed over his words My heart held truth of all that it heard We came to his corner, I know I was blessed As he called from the gravel into my past Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know. On the highway to heaven, the journey is slow. Till I come to my drum at the big powwow show. I'm Rainbow, Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know. Now I sing the stage lights, clear prairie stars in holy old churches, in smoke holy bars. I marry, I bury my neighbors with song. I know I'm a singer and where I belong. Like Rainbow Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know. On the highway to heaven, the journey is slow. Till I come to my drum at the big powwow show. Like Rainbow Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, you know. Like Rainbow Kenny Rainbow, I'm a singer, yeah. Singer, you know. Thank you. Oh, that's my favorite. We whistled that one. Um, that's such a great, exactly what I was talking about, trying to capture a character. You did it right there in, in a moment where you just get, you get a glimpse into them, and then perhaps you don't know their whole story, but you get to construct it a little bit in that song. Um, just uh, perfect. Um, what we always had growing up, 
uh, we're talking about those characters, is the Senex station on the corner by the chuck wagon, right? <laughs> and that's where you got to know what was really maybe happening or what people thought was happening uh, there at the chuck wagon. And we would always um, go in. I would go in with my grandma, Edie, before she died. She died when I was about 11. We moved back to the ranch when I was in second grade. And I was so ready to be at that ranch with my dad that my mom told me I just... Uh, packed up my things when they said that because my grandpa had died and I was born out there but then we had um, just terrible economy in in the early 80s sent my dad back to Grand Forks to work with and in, in the university system and my mom as well we lived in a little white house on Maple Avenue and I walked to school and I would go back to the ranch every time I could with my dad and, and see my grandma and grandpa when my grandpa died um, we moved back there and I packed my bag so fast and was in the, in the, the passenger seat of my dad's pickup with no back seats that's back when they had pickups with no back seats and my mom says like I can't believe but I can believe you just left me like that my my mom and my two sisters back in Grand Forks to sell the house and I lived with my grandma and in the basement in that little brown house that seemed so big when I was so small and um, she would take me into town and we would go to Barrett's pharmacy they had a parrot in the basement with the crap supplies, I'll never forget, and the people that worked there and the way that it smelled. And then, of course, down uh, to the bank and then to the uh, Chuck Wagon Cafe, where my Uncle Paul, her brother, would offer me a pinch of snooze every single time. <laughs> <laughs> and that smell still is like my grandpa, uh, my Uncle Paul. And like, I can't believe it. And then we would get sprinkles on ice cream, uh, on chocolate ice cream from Dixie, who now owns her own cafe in Keene. And I always wonder, you know, what... Uh, they moved that Senex station out onto the bypass, and I, and I wondered if those guys would go with it, you know, and they change, change things in a town like Watford City. It's like you take a... You want to keep it the way that you've always known it because it's your, it's your hometown. It's your small town. Well, that can't really be true for towns and, and communities in rural America. If they stay the same, um, they're, they're dying in a way. And, and that's something I always knew, having a dad as an economic development person, trying to keep this town alive, trying to get people in, trying to create jobs. That wasn't lost on me coming back home and seeing, well, the Senex stations moved out on the bypass. The bypass has moved out around town. The old SNS isn't where the old SNS is, but if you tell me to go by the old car, car dealership, I'm going to go by the same old car dealership. Like all of these places have changed, and I wonder if we still. I, I wondered if these people would move with it, and so we have some of these old timers. They they still go to the, to the Senex even though it's on the bypass. <laughs> they still meet there for coffee every morning, and talk about the old times and the hard times and the times that are happening and that are upon us now. And I always thought as a kid when I sat up on, uh, have, have our neighbors come in in their coveralls from a day like this, it's freezing cold. They smell like diesel exhaust a little bit. Kelly Hanna always kept his overalls on. He still does. He's freezing all the time, a little Irish bald man. Freezing cold, feeding cows come in to warm up and tell stories. Just totally fascinated by it. Wondering as a kid, like, isn't it easier to live somewhere else? <laughs> Why do we make it so hard on ourselves here in this place? But not really wondering, you know, not really thinking that I would do anything different. Just thinking like, well, how dramatic are we? How, how these stories kind of shape and mold us? And would we have these stories to tell uh, at Senex if we just picked an easy life <laughs> and all of these characters in it? So that's the inspiration for this song. Um, the it's called it ain't easy <laughs> uh, but the inspiration is uh, if we if we had it easy if it wasn't so dramatic if we didn't make it hard on ourselves uh, in this way we do in North Dakota as ranchers and farmers and uh, people trying to grow these small towns and keep these places alive what the hell would we talk about at Senex? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Rose up from that dirt road where she fell off of that big horse, left a bit of skin from knuckles and her knees. But not a tear fell from her, not a single scared emotion, except for a kick and a gritting of her teeth. 
Said in this world you would not find a, another girl as brave and strong and free. You know when you fall, I catch you in. When you're lost, I bet you in. All you are, you won't even need me. Oh, it ain't easy, no. Oh, it ain't easy, no. If it were easy, we'd find another way. If we weren't scared as hell, it's not living anyway. Let the hard times in, let them make us brave. Wouldn't want to learn a lesson any other way. Said behind those brown eyes is a woman who still loves him Looking at a man who would not let her down He said, when you smile, I'm smiling When you laugh, I'm laughing with you And when you cry, I cannot bear the sound Oh, it ain't easy, no Oh, it ain't easy, no if it were easy, we'd find another way. If we weren't scared as hell, it's not living anyway. Let the hard times in, let them make us pray. Wouldn't want to learn a lesson any other way. It ain't just muscles on these bones. Or the dirt cake face of home It's the fight, the breath, the beat The kind of hope that brings you to your feet Come on now, girl, the fall's not a sin You might be broken, but you're gonna live You're scared as hell, but don't you dare cry Get back on that horse, get back up and try Breeze moved past the curtains as that woman took her last breath And he took a breath right with her in that room He said all good things go softly like a wave into the ocean Like a snowflake on a Sunday afternoon Oh, it ain't easy, no Oh, it ain't easy, no Wow, that was very, that's powerful, that one. Thank you. Yeah, going through change, it's, it's uh, I can't, I remember I, I was doing the, I think the Watford City High School right after the Bakken thing exploded, and I drove over, I remember the principal calling me, he said, well, when you get to, is it 85? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, just, just get in line. <laughs> And yeah. don't pass. <laughs> and don't panic, and I hope you pee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it was just crazy. I couldn't believe that was the same old western yeah. North Dakota that I had frequented. And uh, so th there's a line that I wrote in my journal, when all you thought you knew is not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you go? Where do you go? And... Uh, um, um, so... When the, uh, the flood of 2011 just inundated the river bottoms that were a very special part of the farm for me, and still is, and the tall cottonwoods, many of them just standing in water that long, and a couple of windstorms laid a lot of them over, and I thought they were invincible. It was like, like kind of like think, naively thinking my songs were going to 
preserve the beauty in, in, in North Dakota, and maybe they will, I don't know. But I, I also thought, naively thought those cottonwoods were invincible, and seeing them lay over was, was quite, quite troubling. But it was all a metaphor for things to come, like, like a pandemic. <laughs> And, I, and I, was, I was just, while you were singing, these thoughts were going through my head, and, and I was thinking about, I had a cousin who, uh, is a very good singer, very good musician, and, but she, she called me, she said, well, I got, this, I got this offer from Nashville, from this, this guy, and he says, I'm, you know, like, I'm really, really good, and that if I send him... 500 bucks he's he can and a, and a tape he's gonna you know he's gonna make a star out of me and I, then I can go down there and and she was just going on and on and I said you know um, I'm not gonna tell you it's not true but it, it sometimes when we want something so bad like I want it to be without masks tonight I want us to be I want it to be like it was I really do but sometimes it's, it's, I said to her at that point, I said, you know when your dad wants to, wants to bail that alfalfa and it's just not ready, it's just not at the right moisture content and if he does go out and, and bail it, it's gonna spoil. He just, and as bad as he wants to bail, it's not, that's just not the truth. And I said, that's, you might wanna think about that with this offer from, from from Nashville. It's not all up to us. When the world seems washed away, don't know what to say or do. Above the water on the rise, starry sky seem far and few somehow we've got to find the love find the love in all the heartache and pain find the love find the love Earth will turn with healing change. When the world seems torn apart, broken heart in two, and all you thought you knew is not, got to find what's true. Find the love in all the heartache and pain. Find the love, find the love. Somehow we got to find the love. It's not all up to you Sun and moon know this true River do what river do Find the love Find the love in all this mess, confess, comes true. Find the love, find the love. 
somehow we're gonna find the love. That's a great song, a good message for these times that keep dragging on after us, finding the um, uh, the hope in it all. And you know, I found that in my struggle. COVID hit, got cancer in my airway, it was blocking 90% of my airway as a singer and a mom running and chasing everyone around. And, and how do you think, well, not laugh at that? <laughs> like, what is this about? And uh, everyone was asking me how I was getting through it. And it was like, all I could think is like, there just really isn't any choice. And then you just try to take it day by day and find the things like, for example, this is very specific, but on the day that you know that you're going to go through something really crappy, that you have to go and get scans and you have to get your COVID test up, touching your brain, you know, that was probably like the worst thing out of the whole situation is that afterwards, maybe we can go grab some ice cream or afterwards I can sit with my husband and watch like a really terrible romantic comedy. Afterwards, I can take a nap. Like because we're just taking these little steps and we're just not guaranteed anything but the moment that we're in. And boy, did I get that lesson slapped across my face um, almost well. I guess it's been a year and a half ago. And um, where, they, where you're just uh, totally vulnerable to the doctors, you're totally vulnerable to whatever outcome it's going to be. When they open your body up and they, they'd say, well, you may or may not even be able to speak again. We'll see what, what happens. We'll see if you, you live through this. And it's like, oh, but like, I was just running around doing life and didn't know that something was threatening it until you wake up one day and a doctor looks at you and says like, I can't believe you're sitting here. <laughs> so I just want to say with such gratitude, I'm so glad that I'm sitting here with you this afternoon and with you, Chuck, you're such an inspiration. And being able to continue to tell the story and to be honest is my greatest, uh, to still have the voice to do it and the energy and the health to do it is my greatest gift. So thank you all for being such support and, and such a great audience. <laughs> So I want to end with a song that uh, has been one of my favorites. Uh, we were talking a lot about change and, and about things that are out of our hands. When I moved back to, back home, that was really when I decided to dive into the, that, that storytelling and, and really see if I could, could just do it as part of my life. And it really has been something that I've been able to do as part of my life and as part of my job out here in the middle of nowhere. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, so I wrote this song, though, thinking... Uh, you know, coming back to your hometown, it's changed from 1,200 people in the biggest county in the state to 10,000 people overnight. And all of these news stations and all of these people were wanting to tell the story of what was happening in our community from what they got from a snapshot or a five minute visit on the phone or an hour visit on the phone or a trip overnight to our community. But it, and there was truth in those stories, of course, but the truth that I found in, in being there and, and being really lucky to be a generation born there so I had a place to come to, so we had a place to work. None of it was the answer that, that people were asking me, well, you have to hate it. You have to absolutely hate it, okay? Or you must absolutely love it. You must be a millionaire uh, uh, because of it. N no, um, and I don't absolutely love it, and I don't absolutely hate it. And listen, it's complicated. There's not one thing in this life that I have found, on my, and now I'm 38, raising two little girls, that isn't complicated, except for you know maybe the love that you have for the people that are supporting you. Um, and that you support. That's, that's complicated too, but the idea that you love them no matter what isn't. Um, so I wanted to somehow create this story in a song, and, and, and this was maybe the easiest song that I wrote, but the one that I'm most proud of because it did capture, I think, that, I hope, that folk message, the thing that I always admired about people like Chuck and people like Lyle Lovett and, uh, and um, 
oh, all of these songwriters, Harry Chapin, that I was growing up with, that they could capture these people. I wanted to capture the people that were standing in long lines at the post office, that were coming out to Western North Dakota to live in a camper, for God's sakes, because it was better here at 40 Below than it was down south where they came from. Can you possibly imagine what your life would have been like, that you would take your, leave your family to come live up here in essentially the coldest place on earth in January in a camper. There's got to be some compassion for that. There's got to be a story there. And so I just started listening and learning and thinking about my relatives and thinking about the people that have come here to make a better life. That's what they were trying to do. The people that were living in the Walmart parking lot, they were looking for a better life in my little town. And so that's complicated. That's not something you get to love or hate because you don't know that story. So I sat down on my... Um, on the little bed in the little house <laughs> where my dad was raised and my husband was cooking Nephla soup. God bless him. Uh, and I can still smell it cooking. I was like five feet away in the, in the bedroom um, writing, trying to write what perhaps some of these people were, were feeling and experiencing. So this is called Boomtown. While I could do this all day, <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this song and, and let Chuck uh, finish us for the afternoon. Donnie's got a truck and he's always here on time. Big buttes and gravel roads. Keeps it between two lines. Thirty bucks an hour and the pay is good, but no time's better spent than the way your daddy should. Still he hangs around. Boom town. Shelly don't stop moving till the sun goes down What she once was, she's not What she's lost now found brings them Breakfast in the morning and ice cold beer at night She listens to them talk She breaks up their fights She stands her ground Oh, boom tail People lying like houses up and down the street. Bottom line below us, about 10,000 feet. 22 below, you find a better place to go. You'd be here till you know you'd hang around. Oh, boom, tell. Heard they just got married down in Arkansas They lost a child and a job before he made the call Heard the weather's rough and the housing's few Got something for me, sir Oh, what's a man to do but try his round Oh, boom, take thousand feet 22 below you find a better place to go you'd be here too you know you'd hang around boom By the farmhouse the other day Jimmy's moved back home He's helping dad cut hay 
pumps in the morning, but he gets home by five. We almost lost him there. Oh, now he's more alive. Oh, God bless the sound. Oh, boom, Thank you. Thank you. A quick little uh, wrap up to that song, and it's probably one of the reasons it's my favorite because I think of Donnie every time that I sing it. I got a phone call on the landline. We have a landline <laughs> out there after I played that song on a, a news station, and it was a man on the other end of the line with a thick southern accent, and he said, I'm looking for the girl who wrote that song, Boomtown, and I had just written it. I had just played it on the news, and that was probably like eight years ago. And I said, just taken aback, like no one calls the landline, but my dad. <laughs> and uh, he, I said, well, that's me. And he said, well, you must know me. I played that over and over, rewound it, played it over and over last night on that segment. You must know me. You wrote that song about me, didn't you? And I thought, well, no, I don't know. I don't know you. I just wrote that song about people that I thought, you know, I see around here. And he said, well, my name's Donnie, and I just got married, and I drive a truck, and I'm from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I thought, what? Oh, wow. So there are people, you know, that's you, Donnie. This is what the song's about. And he was living in Crosby with two daughters who played hockey. And I think about him often, and I told a story in Crosby a couple summers ago, and someone from the back, it was like at a threshing show or whatever, said, oh, yeah, Donnie's still here. He works at the implement dealership. <laughs> so I think that, uh, for and, and I think Chuck would agree, if you feel, if you, oh, if you could just get that feedback, that some something that you wrote spoke to someone, that's it. That's all I want. That's all I want. So thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and you give so much, Jesse. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're going to finish up here. Um, this has just been delightful. Uh, for me, anyway. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you to the uh, Library Association and Beth for uh, thinking about this and the lovely poster. That's a great, great poster. poster. <laughs> <laughs> I get the poster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for braving the cold and, uh, and, uh, and coming here safely. <laughs> Uh, another song that came out of the uh, Art for Life project was uh, after I had, con had uh, conversation, telephone conversation with four women from Jamestown at the Heritage uh, Retirement Community there. They were all in their mid to late 90s, and we were talking about isolation and how they were dealing with it. And, uh, and they all had this very positive view point of view because they all said they had gone through mm. tough things before. And through is the key word, as you alluded to. You go through that trip to wherever the doctor was. And, uh, and uh, so they were just, they were not uh, down at all. And so I just kept taking notes and, and uh, listened to them. We had these long conversations and the... And uh, so I, I'm still sort of ambivalent of what the title of this song is. And I, right now I'm kind of settling in on maybe the four wisdoms um, or the four wise, maybe, W-I-S-E. <laughs> and they all talked about how they uh, reflected on their childhood, too, having grown up on the, on the prairie. And, and they all had worked with horses and they all said, uh, you know, we just, uh, we went to dances a lot, even in the hard times. During the Depression, there would be a, a dance at Stump Lake Pavilion or, or some places like that. Two, three, four. 
for Donna was a small town girl Met the man who changed her world A farmer with a wheat field lawn Thirty years they built a home When he passed she carried on Farmed alone A quarter century She talks about the time to come To be afraid she ain't been one Never bored Never have been Oh, we worked with horses Every Saturday Danced our cares away Oh, we worked with horses Never knew we were Among the common poor Got that down now? For the next one? Gladys grew up farm girl strong Met a man she loved right on They married And dairied In the evening quilts were sewn To warm souls of those unknown Her love to Right on Loretta had the marriage best Until he met eternal rest He was who he was A happy fella She looks upon her working hands No longer strong, young, or tan Wrongly thinks Now good for nothing here we go. Oh, we worked with horses every Saturday, danced their cares away. Oh, we worked with horses, never knew we were among the common poor. talk of what's to come it will be toughest on the young who don't know joy can get you through who never knew what we had to Francis filled with fortitude she got a gift good attitude young at heart most important part It was a pretty darn good life I was a pretty darn good wife To a pretty good man You do the best you can How about it? Oh, we worked with horses Every Saturday Danced our cares away Oh, we worked with horses Never knew we were Among the common Every Saturday, dance the cares away. Oh, we worked with horses, never knew we were among the common poor. Never knew we were among the common poor. Jesse Peter Schofield. Chuck Suki. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> what a night. Thank you.